Hi, I'm Alan Redimirio, and I'm joined today by Rajiv Vishwanathan, who authored a commentary recently on the key trends that we're observing in the Asia-Pacific utilities sector. Hi, Rajiv. Hi, Alan. Rajiv, the report suggests that uh, Standard & Poor's ratings and outlook on Asia-Pacific utilities are stable, but remains in a fine balance over the next six months. And I believe the report cites the slowing uh, 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 economic prospects in Asia, uh, which could be the reason for this. Yeah, well, while there's a slowdown in, the, in most of the economies in Asia, I think there are some strong counterbalancing factors. Mm -hmm. uh, key to this is that in most Asian economies, you'll observe that the power demand is still strong. And that's driven by the low per capita consumption of power and also the existing large deficit in power. So there is some inherent support that this offers even in the wake of some slowing down in some economies. But besides the slowing down of economies, it's not uniform uh, country per country. You probably expect some country to, to face more slowdown. And also, uh, I believe some markets also um, uh, are more resilient uh, to any, any slowdown in the, uh, in the economy as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, you, if you take the instance of China, um, and similarly Korea, Taiwan, mm -hmm. um, these economies have large exposure in terms of a customer mix to the industrial sector. So a slowing economy will obviously impact them more than some of the other economies. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you have Malaysia, for instance, and Philippines, mm -hmm. where residential customers are, form a bigger part of the customer mix. And residential demand tends to be largely inelastic compared to industrial demand uh, when it comes to economic growth volatilities. And then you obviously have the likes of India and Indonesia, where the power deficit is huge the low electrification rate mm -hmm. still provides uh, some support. So the impact is really uh, dependent on the nature of the economy and the customer mix. But I think a bigger factor is really the fuel prices, uh, the fuel mix that is used for power generation, um, and also the ability of power generators to really pass through some of the volatilities and variances in fuel costs to customers. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the past six months, or actually past three months, um, coal prices have softened and coal today still remains the dominant fuel source for power generation and therefore it has really helped boost some of the margins for some power generators in the region. I think it's a good point that you mentioned there but I think we have to take uh, a cautious view given that the, the prices of LNG and natural gas in the region has been increasing. Um, if you look at the trend over the past 12 months, uh, demand is high for, for LNG and natural gas, um, whilst, uh, whilst supply has been uh, dwindling. And, and particularly uh, given what's happened in Japan after Fukushima, there's just a large demand for replacement fuel to replace the, uh, the closed, uh, the shutdown nuclear reactors in Japan, which is uh, really fueling the prices of, of LNG. Uh, in Asia compared to say in the US. And if you, if you add to that as well, um, the, in the supply side, um, the reserves of many of the, uh, of the natural gas reserves of many of the uh, of, of Asian uh, economies are also, um, are also dwindling. Uh, so that's adding to the, to the price pressures. And it's getting, getting harder to, uh, to, to source for new natural gas in the region. So absolutely, uh, with LNG prices going up, uh, what, we, what we spoke about, the fuel mix, is going to become really important because, you know, there is a push towards cleaner energy and a lot of power generators are looking at alternatives from coal yeah. for, for power generation. Yeah. So it's going to push up the aggregate cost of power generation in a lot of economies. And when that happens, it will really test the ability and the, actually the willingness of uh, regulators to increase tariffs in line, with the, in line with the increase in fuel costs, particularly in a softening economy. Um, in a lot of Asian countries, we, we, we know that the regulators still have to approve tariff increases, even though the automatic pass-through mechanisms are already in place.
So I think the rate setting mechanism is going to be extremely key to the margins of power generators uh, going forward. Thank you, Rajiv, for your time today. Thank and you. thank you for listening. Please do read Rajiv's report, which you can find by clicking the link on the right-hand side of your screen. Thank you.